tonight. Let's speak with the President's Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Mr. Garaba Ashewu, with some of the issues that have been linked to the President and the fact that people had raised issue on why the President hosted that neck meeting at the Council Chamber. Thank you so much, Mr. Garaba Ashewu, for your time tonight on the, uh, on the program. Let's begin by getting clarification or the reasons behind uh, what a lot of Nigerians, the average person sees as where the Federal Executive Council meeting uh, is usually held every Wednesday, was where the following day, on Thursday, that the party or the president hosted uh, the NEC meeting. Why? Well, uh, thank you for inviting us to be part of your program. And to begin by saying that uh, if you look at the laws of the country, constitution and all of that, there's nothing that says that a section of the villa is designated for this meeting or that meeting. So no law is uh, violated. Uh, the president is a permanent resident of the villa so long as he's serving his elected term in office. He was required to present himself before a TV camera and be part of a digital meeting. This meeting had been called not to take place in the villa, but to take place digitally. And that the president had around himself some governors who came and some members of the National Assembly. And the president chose to do this from the council chamber. One, as I said, because there is no law that says he cannot make a telephone or TV conference call from his bedroom or, or any chamber. But also the fact that there are concerns about health. We are in a, in a coronavirus environment. The situation does not allow for meetings in tiny rooms where people are compacted in total disregard of social distancing. You, you know the, the nature of the Secretariat and its conference room. People, in spite of air conditioning, people sweated through the hours of meetings. You can't have that going on under this coronavirus, coronavirus situation. So there are facilities for teleconferencing within the chamber. The president sat to do this while he was addressing the larger number of members who were collected, connected via telephone and conference calls all across the country. He violated no law of this country. That's the point we're making. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Garba Shehu, so uh, violation of law on one side. So a lot of lawyers have also said that this is merely a moral issue, isn't it? And the fact that people, uh, they thought that the decision to host that meeting at the Federal Executive Council Chamber is about using the resources of state for party affairs do you think that was right? Well, first of all, I will say that uh, the question of morality does not arise because uh, nobody, as I said, by practice or by law had designated the council chamber as a holy shrine where there cannot be this or that kind of meeting. And two, it is funny that people will ask that the president cannot have access, given incumbency, that he cannot use state you know, facilities for engagement such as we just had now, teleconferencing. Now, assuming this meeting had held in the party secretariat in Wusetu, did they expect that the president will come out of the villa and flag down a taxi and go, that he will not use the protected bullet proof vehicles that he used to that meeting. And of course, if he had used those cars to the meeting, which he would have, they would still have said, why did you use state resources to do or to attend a party meeting? So everyone does it. That does not make it right. However, the point is that it, it, the PDP, which had been very outspoken in this thing, look, PDP had used the council chamber to converse a breach of the constitution of Nigeria wasn't third term conversed in that chamber. Where were they? The problem they have as critics 
the party has lost memory of its own history. The way they are going, if care is not taken, one day PDP will tell us that they have forgotten that they have ru ruled this country for 16 years in the course of which they had caused so much ruination. Otherwise, look at all of the years that they have served in that. What is President Buhari doing that others did not know? However, as I said, strictly on the point of view of law and morality, nothing, nothing has been breached by holding a teleconference from any part of the villa. It could have been the president's bedroom. Uh, Mr. Shehu, uh, are you saying to us tonight that there are no other facilities within the presidential villa uh, where the president can hold this meeting or this teleconference aside the council chamber? Uh, put the PDP the, aside. Uh, let's talk uh, as though we are Nigerians and uh, the president has his loyalty to Nigerians, some of them who voted for him into office. The mm. fact that uh, party or partisan issues are being taken into the hallowed chamber of uh, the governance, where governance are being held, raised a lot of question. As you saw, are you saying that there are no other places where this can be held aside the council chambers, where governance issues are being discussed? No, absolutely no. Because uh, when you say that, then people miss the very essence of incumbency. Incumbency confers on a leader a number of advantages. The, the chairman of PDP cannot say, give me a room in the villa today, I want to go and sleep there. They will not admit him because he didn't win an election. The opposition cannot go to the villa and say, give us a conference room, we want to use it. You have to win an election to go in there. Those who won election before us, they have used the villa. When we finish our own term, we will leave. New people will come and occupy it. And they have to use the incumbency advantages are there. That's the essence of winning. If you lose, you don't get them. Uh, m m Mr. Shehu, you have been, this is not your first time working in the presidential villa. Can you remember at any point during the times that you were there that such partisan issues are, uh, are being held at the council chamber? Can you remember any in those years? Please, can I get uh, this question again because the connection is becoming so poor. So I'm saying that this is again? not your first time working in the presidential villa. You've worked with former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Can you remember in those years where the council chamber was used for such a partisan issue or partisan meeting? I'm not say, let me, let me say, I'm not trying to justify justification from what others did in the past. If you are asking people with institutional memory, we have them in the villa. And as I said to you, if it is a desecration of the villa, the former vice president himself was announced expelled from that chamber. How could that was the height of partisanship in any government that you could have had? So the, we have seen them come and go, and they had uh, expressed support for this leader or that leader, and said, We support you, whether they're traditional rulers or governors or whoever they are. So the thing is that people cannot forget themselves and begin to, because it is Buhari. That's why they are making all this noise. That's why I said people forget their own history. They, they forget from what where about they from. the. Uh, so, so, a lot of. I mean, one of the other issues which has been raised is the fact that uh, the Attorney General, uh, Mr. Bubaka Malami, was the one who sworn in the, the APC Kiataka Committee chairman. Is that also, uh, in any sense, within the presidency, a right decision to take? Uh, please, can you give me the question again? Because so, um, uh, I, I said another issue that was raised is the role of the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice in that cabinet, who was used as a lawyer to swear in uh, the new uh, the APC caretaker chairman. For some, a lot of people who found a problem with that, from the presidency perspective, was that an, a, a good decision to make? 
before before he became attorney general of the federation he had been a card carrying member and the lawyer of the party didn't when he saw in adam soshomole after their own election at eagle square why didn't they make this observation attorney general had been there to swear in all party leaders at uh, the party secretariat and the, at eagle square where we are partners all government lawyers had done this in the past so he do he did that as a lawyer as a as a lawyer and a member of the not necessarily as attorney general of the federation uh let me ask you then because uh, there's another uh, issue here and it's about your principal's relationship with the leader of uh, the yes, apc uh, uh, what is the president's because a lot of the disposition of a lot, some members of your party is such that the decision of neck and the body language of the president is not one that is favorable to perhaps the relationship between Balatinobu and President Muhammad Buhari. Those who say that they don't know the nature of the relationship uh, between the president and Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. as we said in a statement. They have managed one of the most enviable relationships you could ever have in politics, without any rancor or any stress. They know how they do it. They have been in touch with one another. They are in touch with one another. They converse directly and through trusted officials, including our chief of staff and all of that. So people should not double into things that they don't know. Everyone is a winner from what has happened on on Thursday in, in the, in, uh, at that uh, next meeting. I'm glad to say that Ashwa uh, Jubala Ahmed Tinubu himself has given a statement in which he totally, totally endorsed all of that has happened and has said he's behind it. So there shouldn't be a controversy where there is none, unless people simply are desperate to manufacture one. Can you confirm to us whether or not President Buhari conferred with uh, the, uh, the leader of the APC, Bala Tinubu, uh, before that NEC meeting? Did your principal give you a hint about that? Whether the, whether the president gave him a hint? But whether the president hinted you uh, if he conferred with Bola Tinubu before that neck meeting and perhaps about the decision they took at that neck meeting? I am not in a position to give you this confirmation because when they hold their private conversations, I will not be invited as, as a witness. So between the president and Ashwa Jupola Tinubu is a relationship that is elevated above my head. What they discuss between themselves, I will not know. But I assure you that if people think that one has, is alienating the other, they, they are totally, totally wrong, especially given that, that fantastic statement that has been issued and personally signed by Ashwa Jubola Hamid Tinubu on all of these matters. But Mr. Shea, what is the position of the president himself? Has he told you anything after that meeting about Bola Tinubu? We have issued a statement, and, and the president is in the full picture of that statement, which is to say that between I and Bola Tinibu, there is nothing that is amiss. And so we said to people, to critics, don't say things you don't know. You, you, better, you, better, you, better, you better study this relationship and know how it works before you begin to pretend that you are knowledgeable about these things. A lot of people, unfortunately, have displayed their ignorance on TV and newspapers, classifying winners and losers from the outcome of that meeting. No. Everyone came out a winner, and the rank and file of our party membership is, ex is extremely pleased with that outcome. And the rest is for us to see what comes from here. Mr. Garba Shehu, Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Media and Publicity, Thank you tonight for your interventions and your thoughts. Thank you for the opportunity.